Okay. So this is the Manifesto Development Workshop. Um, so, okay, no worries, Abby. Um, so this is the Manifesto Development Workshop. Um, so what we're gonna go through today is what is a manifesto, key principles, your policies, um, framing your ideas and the formats you can put your manifesto into and some overall do's and don'ts. So what is a manifesto? As a summary, a manifesto is what you were, you're promising to achieve if you're elected for the role. And this is what the student body will base their vote on. So it's what you're interested in um, and what you're passionate about and what you want to do in the role. So this comes down to three areas. So one is what you want to change. These are your policies. What you want to see in the role being done, how you want to improve university life for students in your particular remits. Secondly, why do you want to do it? So this has really got to shine through in your manifesto. Why do you, why are you passionate about these issues? So make sure to include that. It's not all about what you want to change. It's all about why you want to do it. And also, why are you the right person for the role? So this can doesn't mean you have to reel off loads of experience that's relevant. You don't have to have specific experience, but what skills do you have? Um, and again, shining, making that passion shine through of why you want to do it is a reason why you're the right person. If you are super passionate about these issues, then people are going to believe that you're the person for the role. So that is why you want to check, what, what you want to change, why you want to do it, and why you're the right person. So that gives you an overall sort of structure for your manifesto. Key principles for your manifesto are First off, be clear and concise. So you will all have seen that the word limit um, for your manifesto is 500 words. That is not a lot. And there's a reason for that. We don't, um, we don't want you to write reams and reams and reams in a 19 page manifesto. People aren't going to read it. And that's not what's going to engage students. So keep it concise and keep it clear for accessibility reasons as well. Think about how you're um, wording things, make sure it's very clear in how you word things so that you're able to engage all types of students. So be clear and concise. Secondly, be engaging. So students, again, are only gonna read what they want to read. You've got to make sure your manifesto stands out and is relatable to them. And we'll talk a bit more about this in, our fr in the framing of your ideas later. But secondly, it's got to be engaging. And thirdly, achievable. This is a really big one. You could, if you wanted, put a wild idea in your manifesto saying that you are gonna um, make all drinks free on campus but you've got to remember that you that is a promise to students that you will be held accountable for if you are elected. So if you say a promise like that, that means if you're elected, you have to deliver or at least try to deliver that. Um, otherwise, you will come under scrutiny from the students because they have voted for you on that basis. So this is a really big one to make sure your ideas are feasible. Um, to help with this, we have staff contacts like myself for each of your roles that you can talk to who have experience to let you know if something is completely crazy and just wouldn't be done, couldn't be done in, in financial or because of the university structure or um, something that is possible and they are there to help. So you can find those on the candidate hub on our website, um, which you will have a link for. 
So do use those staff contacts. And if you know the current officers in the role, also ask them about what is feasible and what isn't. Um, because you've got to remember it's a promise to students and you want to make sure it is something that you can try to achieve. Obviously, things aren't always going to be 100% achievable. When you get into the role, you'll find more about it. And some things, because of circumstances, because of lockdown, etc., might not be possible. But it's got to be something that you can at least try to achieve. So your policies. So these are your ideas for change, your policies and the basis of what you want to do in the role. So things to consider when you're coming up with your policies are be true to what you're passionate about. So that's really going to shine through. If it's something that you don't believe is a real need that has to change for students at York, then people aren't going to be convinced that that is something that they want as well. You've got to be the main seller of that point. Secondly, consider all the students you're representing. So this is a really important one. There is a massive diversity of students and you, unless if you're running for a PTO role, obviously that is slightly um, decreased in who you're representing and that the diversity is smaller. However, there's still diversity within, say, all of BAME students aren't the same, all the disabled students aren't the same. So you've got to consider the mass diversity that you're representing and take them into account when you're thinking what needs to be changed. So you've got to think what is everyone's needs and appeal to all of them, not only to be a good representative op officer, but also that's going to help um, when students come to vote for you. Um, if they see something that's relevant to their identities, then they're going to be more likely to feel you are wanting to represent them. Thirdly, do your research. So know the national picture um, of students' unions. Know the sort of, obviously the national picture right now for universities is, is in the news and there's a lot of issues going on. Um, particularly because of COVID. So read up on what, what is going on in universities and, and, and student unions as a whole. And again, we've got information on the Candidate Hub that can help you with that, looking into the Office for Students, um, looking into a website called Wonky, which is about higher education policy. Um, and this can really help you to know what needs to go in your manifesto, what is a current issue that's really relevant to students. And finally, stay issue focused. So all of the policies that you come up with should come from an issue. So they are the solution to an issue that is relevant to students. So try not to get carried away and just think about the solutions. Make sure you're linking it back to that issue. Um, because that's where it will create a pathway for students to know exactly what they're getting. So this is the issue and this is what I am going to do about it. So next up, should I say, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat. And um, whilst we're going on, I'm happy to pause and, and answer any questions. Otherwise, we can talk at the end. So next we've got framing your ideas. So this is about how you can make it relatable to students. So firstly, one way to frame your ideas is to think about metaphors. So is there something that you can create a metaphor for your idea um, through comparison with something else? Secondly, stories. So this is a way um, to make you seem relatable to students and to get the topic stuck in their brains. If you can, if you know of a story that relates to it, um, then it can be a really good way of getting it stuck in people's minds and remembering it and also relating 
their stories they have similar stories that um they can relate back to yours thirdly slogans we all know that they're quite big in campaigning but they can really make um, a difference if you have a catchphrase that relates to a certain policy um, in particular um, or a catchphrase for your campaign overall it can make um, make it um, memorable to students and then fourthly thematic have a think about where your policies group so that you can come up with those overall themes um, and then you've got a more concise message if they fit in say three clear themes so this is where i'm going to ask you to interact a bit to give my voice a break and um, so if you just want to have a think you're unfortunately just yourselves if we were in a room i'd get you to do it in groups but if you have a think about one idea or manifesto point that you have and the different ways you could frame them so does it fit into a theme do you have a story you could use for it and um, or does it is there a metaphor or catchphrase you could use for that point so i'll just give you five minutes to have a think about that and then if anyone wants to feedback and is comfortable with sharing their ideas, then we can go through those. Yeah, yeah, COVID it would be a theme, um, Kath, so, so that can kind of link, link into it. Right, so I'll just give you until 20 past and then we'll then we'll chat. Hi, Laura. Um, Hi. My question was, um, you were talking about the issues and how it's the solutions, but I'm wondering, I'm thinking there's a fine line between raising the issues, but also just kind of saying that everything that is about the uni at the moment. So I if you have any advice for kind of striking that balance between doing like you're kind of neglecting all of the work of your predecessor you were really breaking up there Frankie but am I right in saying you're thinking how do we um not just talk about loads and loads of issues and not think oh there's already been great stuff done is that what you were getting at there? How do we strike that balance? 
Yes. Okay. So yeah, absolutely. I'm not saying your manifesto has to be full of, um, full of issues in that everything is rubbish at the moment. I mean, more an issue could be, um, this has been worked on. I want to continue it because this is still an issue. So, um, you can reflect on the fact that there's been great progress by your predecessors um but if something hasn't been solved yet then i guess there is still an issue there but there's a way to put that in a positive sense by saying this has already been done i want to continue this work because i believe we still have somewhere to go with this issue does that make sense Yes, great. Um, so does anyone want to feed back on um, if they have a theme or a story or a metaphor or catchphrase to go with their um, idea? Feel free to just unmute yourself if you do. Yes, Frankie, go ahead. Well, hopefully your Wi-Fi works for it. Yeah, we'll, um, I'll try the Wi-Fi bit. Dropping out or... <laughs> it is dropping out quite a bit. Um, if, it, if you give it a go and then um, I'll let you know what I can hear. If not, put it in the chat. <laughs> okay, um, well one point i wanted to raise was around first aid for sports um it's been an issue for a long time and the theme it would fit with is that i want to provide more opportunities and courses and qualifications for um students so referee providing trained first aiders on sort of match days um i have some from personal experience incidences before where we've not been able to get hold of a first aider and it's been another team that's visited us not reflected well on in terms of the metaphor i was thinking because it's a big like to solve before back for next I think it could be first task first aid or something or first priority first aid kind of ringing on that first part of it mm. got most of that yes I got most of that and um, that's great so you've got a theme and a story and a metaphor or catchphrase for it so that's perfect um I think that's a really strong, strong point about um, going with it's something you can do first, exactly, whilst other things can't happen in sport. Um, and that relatable personal story is really strong. Um, and you write a theme, it fits into one of your themes. So wonderful. Thank you for sharing that, Frankie. Um, does anyone else want to share either on the by the chat or by unmuting yourself. Um, I could. Yes, go ahead. So my one of my manifesto points is um, holding different workshops and events to teach the entire student population about different cultures. Um, this theme goes into racism and educating students to combat racism. And a story I have is uh, the COVID pandemic. Well, 2020 was quite a term this year for a lot of the BAME community. I had a lot of microaggressions fly towards me um, from strangers and people I knew. knew the uh, people trying to argue against the Black Lives Matter movement, et cetera. Um, and then my metaphor would be education, not ignorance, because a lot of racism stems from ignorance and those events would hopefully combat that. Wonderful, thank you, Jasmine. Yeah, that's that's great. You fit them all in there again. Um, and, and a really 
um, important manifesto point. Thank you for sharing. Is there anyone else that wants to share? Hey. Hi, Rockass. Um, yeah, so I'm thinking of maybe playing around um, with the idea of engaging a dialogue and engaging in conversation um, and talking with students to improve their current services. Um, so in terms of um, mental health provision and open door services, uh, for example, um, there's kind of lack of um, space for feedback. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I guess that's kind of a theme I want to play around, um, you know, uh, having the space for dialogue and conversation. Um, because yes, yeah, students have have things to say, and they know best what what. In many, at least in some cases, we know we know best. You know how how things could be improved. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's a great theme. Yeah, yeah. Students are expert of their own experience, um, and yeah using a theme of sort of dialogue obviously there's other manifesto sort of points you can put in with that in terms of dialogue with yourself and um, as an officer and um, as well as dialogue with the uni so I think that's a good theme yeah thank you for sharing um so we'll move on now um but feel free to anyone to chat um as we go on so Next, um, we're going to talk about the formats to convey your manifesto. So firstly, your main point of where you're going to put your manifesto, where students are going to see it, is on your nomination form. So this needs to be 500 words and it needs to start with three short summary bullet points. So if you haven't already put in those bullet points, please make sure you do that's what's going to go to student media um, and they will th they'll include that in visions um, website so make sure you've got those three summary bullet points at the top and that also helps to be clear and concise also you're going to talk about your manifesto of course on social media especially a lot this year um, and we won't touch on that today because that's that's will be touched on more in our workshop on Thursday about personal brand and also we're going to have a social media guide um, for you to look at but we're just going to touch on today about digital po digital posters and um, obviously digital posters this year not physical ones but how to best present your manifesto ideas on a poster so Three top tips for making your manifesto posters are be bold, be creative and keep it simple. Also, a really big one is be accessible with them as well. And um, we're not going to go into full how to make them accessible today, but we do have guides on the Candidate Hub about how to design accessibility and also how to make your social media posts, etc., accessible. So do make sure you look at that. So for being bold, um, this is a really good example of a poster that keeps things bold and brief. So immediately your eye is drawn to the name and the role they're running for, and then their hashtag at the bottom. So you've got to think what do students want to get out of this poster? They want to know who is doing it and the main points that they're running on. So you've got three clear points that you can see that are their manifesto summary. And um, so this is a really good example of being bold and being brief. However, they are missing one point, which is 
the call to action. So people have read your poster, they think it looks great, they think you're a really great candidate, they want to vote for you, but there's nothing on there to tell them how to vote, where to vote, when to vote. So make sure you add to your posters and uh, campaigning content, content in general, um, the call to action, which is voting opening on the 5th of March, and the voting link, which is um, which I can share with you, but it will just be the same of all of our other um, links, but slash vote. So then where you nominated, it was slash nominate, and it will be slash vote for voting. So make sure you get that on there. Um, because students want to know once they've read your amazing posters, what they can do next. So second, be creative. So this is a wonderful example of being creative. Um, your eye is immediately drawn to the graphics and um, they've got sort of an innovative, innovative way of um, presenting. Um, so have a think about colors and where how you split up that manifesto again they've split it up into four areas and it's engaging to read then finally keep it simple so which one of these do you think um are you more likely to read either respond in the chat or unmute yourself what do we think to these two posters i'd say the first i'm not sure if i'm drawn to it because it's more aesthetically my type but um it just looks <laughs> a bit more con it just looks a bit more concise organized yeah yeah and frankie is agreeing the one the one on the left the spark change one what do other people think why why are we drawn to that one less cluttered packed together on the left yes exactly abby um so you immediately want to read i would agree jasmine that's also pretty colors but you uh, can see the three main um points they've got they're highlighted and it's just set out in a clear simple way compared to the tom for community one you've it's quite small font and it's not got any breaks or structural headings it's all just one big block um, and there's also a, too much text as well as Abby says cluttered so you've got a section on the right about him and also a section on the left you, you can't get everything onto a poster and um, you've got to summarize um, and link to where people can find more um, it's not a one-stop shop as to finding everything about you. So, um, so link to where they can find more. So link to the vote page where your manifesto will be or your um, social media campaign pages. But don't put it all on your poster because you just won't be able to put it in a way that people want to read. Um, wonderful. So finally, um, just some summary do's and don'ts, and then we can have um, just a little chat if anyone's got any questions about what we've uh, talked about today. So do, do do your research, like we said, um, look into the data and look into the national picture. So what's going on with York students and also what's going on with students in general because there are most issues especially at the moment when everything is everyone is being affected by coronavirus and um, the most students are, are experiencing very similar issues especially when we think about welfare so do your research again look at the candidate hub speak to the current officers or member of staff for context and for fees checking the feasibility of your ideas as we mentioned earlier prioritize your ideas so that comes into when we're talking about making those clear summary points and what goes on your poster prioritize what are your strongest and overall ideas to go on your poster 
and also in your manifesto in general. With 500 words, you might not be able to get everything in. So prioritise what is most going to be most important to you and most important to students. Think about who you're appealing to. So as I said earlier, you are appealing to the specific of York students, but also the fact that they are extremely diverse. In, we're not just talking in terms of race or anything, everyone is different. So make sure you are covering um, everyone as much as possible. Obviously you can't cover everyone, but make sure you're appealing to a diverse um, range of students. Focus on the big picture. So um, there could be tiny things that you could put in your manifesto, um, really small, quick win ideas, which do have a place in a manifesto um, and can be um, a good idea to put in some quick wins for yourself. But think um, big. You've got a whole year to make these achievements and you want to be um, working as hard as you can to do them. So, you know, don't don't undermine what you're you think you're able to do. Think big and um, think big ideas that you're trying to change. And even if you only achieve a tiny part of them, you can have been striving for a, um, a big idea. And then be yourself with the volume turned up. So this is um, a big one for any of you who are sort of um, concerned about campaigning and how you put yourself across in your manifesto. Um, just be really um, um, engaging and, and be confident in yourself. So when we say with the volume turned up, as in be confident in what you can give. So when we talked about um, earlier, the area of why you are the best person to do it. Believing yourself for that, um, you are the best person. So make sure you get that across to students. You all have a unique perspective and something to offer. So make sure that comes across. And then do not, um, do not settle on one single issue. So this wouldn't be a very good manifesto if you were just on one thing you've got like I say you've got a whole year and um, so focus on different areas even if they all come under one theme there's got to be different issues within there don't be negative about other people so of course this is a big one that you should all know from um, reading the rules that there should be nothing in your manifestos about um, how someone did um, wouldn't be good their manifesto is rubbish mine is great don't be negative about others don't promise things you can't deliver so be um, feasible be achievable don't write too much information or text especially you well you won't be able to go over 500 words on your manifesto um, for your nomination form but even more don't think that there needs to be more elsewhere keep it to that concise 500 words and work off that. Don't go away and link to a 19 page document. Um, and again, don't forget to highlight what makes you special.